Hello and welcome to part 3 of our lesson on how to perform spatial data analysis using QGIS and Synapjet. In this video, we shall be continuing from where we left off in part 2, representing our data on a map. We were at the level of the attribute table. One of the nice things about the attribute table is that it can be edited. To edit your attribute table, click on the pencil icon on the top left corner. This brings you to the edit mode. In the edit mode, you can add a feature or row. You can add a new column. You can delete a column, among other things. I will urge you to take out some time to try the different features of the attribute table. To create our map, we will need to add a new field for the attack rate. To do this, we click on the new field icon. A dialog box opens up for you to fill in the different fields. For the name, I will type in AR for attack rate. I will leave the comment field empty. In the type field, I will select decimal number for the length, I will take 6, which corresponds to the length of the attack rate for the center region, which happens to be the longest. You can check your data set to verify this. And on the precision, I will put in 2 because the attack rate is adjusted to 2 decimal places. So at the end, you should have something like this. Once you have all the fields, of your dialog box filled in, click on the OK button. By default, this new variable goes to the end of your attribute table. So here we have the variable. To bring this variable closer to the administrative names, I will right click on the name of any variable. I go to organize columns and I'll deselect all. I will now select my administrative names, including my variable. I click OK. The attribute table now displays only administrative names and my newly created variable. I will now type in the attack rate for each region using the data set on our Excel file. To do this, I will double click where I want to type and type in the data set. When you must have finished typing, you should have something that looks like this. I will now click, click on the save button to save all the edits I have made. I will now toggle off the edit to go into the non-edit mode. We now have our attribute table edited and ready to be represented on our map. Now that we are done editing our attribute table, let's now go back to GIS proper. To do this, I come to the GIS icon and I take my first project. To assign names to the regions, we right click on our layer of interest and select properties. The property dialog box now opens up. In the properties dialog box, you will find a menu to the left. To assign labels to the regions of Cameroon, we go to labels. As expected, QGIS has no labels assigned. In order for us to assign these, we click on the small black arrow to the right and take single labels. We now need to find what variable Q 
QGIS should use to label our regions. In this case, we want the name of the region in English, which is given the name ADMI1 underscore EN. We now click on apply. And as you can see, QGIS has the names of our regions on the different regions of Cameroon. You can now play with more properties to add some beauty to your map. For the purpose of this video, I will use the text property to show you how. So let me click on the text property. I can choose to increase the size. Let me go to 14. I can also choose to change the color. I can take white and apply. I think 14 is too big. After you must have been done with all your editing, you now take OK. The dialog box closes up and you have your map. With our different regions now leveled, we want to display the attack rate. As a reminder, the attack rate is the risk of getting a disease during a specified period. So we want the regions with the highest risk to have the highest color intensity and those with the lowest risk to have the lowest color intensity. To do this, we right click on our layers of interest in the layers list and take properties. The properties dialog box opens up. We then click on symbology. Then on the small black arrow to the right and select graduated. For the value, we select AR for attack rate since this is what we want to display. For symbol, we leave as is. This is the current color of your map. For the legend format, we leave it to default settings. The color ramp shows us the color intensity. Regions with higher values will have the highest intensity of red. And as you move down to regions with smaller values, the color intensity reduces. You can also select the color intensity to your choice. For me, I will take the red. Another interesting property to look at here is classify. Classify groups the attack rate values into classes. By default, QGIS has the number of classes 5. Let's leave the default settings and click Classify. QGIS goes ahead and classifies our attack rate into 5 classes. If you are not satisfied with the default classes assigned, you can go ahead and edit. I want the first class, for example, to start from zero. So let me edit. I double click and I put the lower value at zero. I then take OK. You now see that our value for this class starts from zero up to 4.3. I will now go to apply. And as you can see, QGIS makes some changes to my map. If you're happy with this, you now click on OK. One of the things you notice here is that the white label we used on the map isn't great enough. So we need to change it to say black. So to do this, I go back to there, take properties, go to labels, Come to text, 
go to color and take black take apply and if you're happy with this you now take okay if you have gotten up to this point i must say congratulations in our next video part four we will be looking at the map print layout we will be looking at how to add a title to our map how to add a legend or a map key to our map and how to export our map as a picture or a PDF file. At this level, this is what you should have. If you enjoyed our video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe and share. Also hit the notification button in order to get notifications of our future videos. Thank you very much. So much love, Wilfred Ngwa.